Good morning, and welcome to your daily Farm and Home Show, brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host. Good morning, and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles, and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Ray Smith. He's with the University of Kentucky as Extension Forage Specialist there. Good morning, Ray. Good morning. Well, I'm glad you're here today because we're going to talk. You know, Kentucky is a forage state, mm -hmm. and, That's right. and we're so proud of all the things that we can grow, but tall fescue probably still remains a very common forage that we have. Very common. In fact, five and a half million acres in Kentucky have tall fescue, at least in part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so we've heard most of the magazines that we've picked up, we've, we've heard about maybe some trouble with yeah. tall mm -hmm. fescue. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. First of all, tall fescue is one of the, the, the hardiest plants or the best surviving plants, um, but part of that is part of the problem because there's a fungal endophyte in tall fescue mm -hmm. that helps the plant survive, but it also produces toxins. Oh. And those toxins are toxic to insects, which is good. We don't want insects eating it, but it also can be toxic to cattle. So cattle don't gain as well. They have heat stress. Sometimes they have conception problems. So that's the downside of fescue. Right, but mm -hmm. there are things that we can do, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. to help with that endophyte. That's right. And one of the simplest things, and I, br I brought a clover plant here because if you take your existing pasture with, with tall fescue, in this time of the year is a good time to add um, red clover like this plant or white clover okay. um, and that helps dilute the the toxins in the fescue plus right. you have added nutrition. Can you hand that over here? Sure. Ray? Let's take a look at this. So basically what you're saying is if we add this to our existing it'll help dilute some of that. That's right. That's and right. And it also adds some great nutrition. Oh perfectly. So so you, you help out, you overcome many of the issues with fescue, not all of them but many of them by adding clover. This time of the year, you can do what we call frost seeding mm -hmm. um, clover. You can just put clover on top of the ground and the freezing thaw in action will help get it into the soil. Yes, mm -hmm. or the mudding. The <laughs> mudding, that's we've right. Had a that's lot right. That's been an issue. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, if you've also, when you pick up magazines, you you read about the endophyte free or mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. some of the novel endophytes. Mm -hmm. Are those good options for Kentucky as well? They are good options. Um, when they first discovered the endophyte and fescue and the problems, they started trying to figure out ways to get rid of it. And they found that the, if they didn't have the endophyte in the plant, the fungal endophyte, um, then they didn't have animal problems, but the plants didn't survive as well. Mm -hmm. So in just about the last 10 or 15 years, researchers came up with the idea of if we can get an endophyte that doesn't produce the toxins, helps the plant survive better, but doesn't produce the toxins. And so that is present now. We have novel endophyte or beneficial endophyte tall fescue. Um, one of them that seed will be available this fall is called Lacefield tall fescue after oh. Dr. Gary Lacefield. Um, so we're excited to have those available for people. Yeah, and so those are good options. Now, you guys have done a lot of work, a lot of research mm -hmm. in this, mm -hmm. and, and you're offering some workshops. That's right, that's right. So coming up just March 20th in mm -hmm. Princeton, Kentucky, we have what we call a novel fescue workshop. It's teaching people how to plant tall fescue, how to get rid of the existing Kentucky 31 tall fescue, um, how to manage it, even things like putting clover there. But one of the big themes is trying to how people can get varieties of these novel fescues and plant those and establish those and have much better production from their cattle. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, is, you know, are production practices different with the novel fescue versus your, your just Kentucky 31 or? They, they're really not different. The only difference is the animals, if they don't have the toxin, then they're gonna eat more. And so you do have to make sure that you use rotational grazing. You, you do give the novel fescues a rest because the animals will eat them into the ground, mm -hmm. whereas Kentucky 31 kind of protected itself or protects itself because the animals start feeling sick when they're eating those toxins. Oh, mm -hmm. I see. So, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times some of our pastures are abused. You know, we overgraze mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. for various reasons. And so with the novel, we wouldn't be able to do that. That wouldn't be one that you'd abuse mm -hmm. um, where you could maybe, we'd never tell someone to take all of their Kentucky 31 stands out because it's a good grass. It's good for winter grazing. It's good for that kind of feeding area. Um, but on your better pastures is where you'd plant the novel fescue. And they've shown very good longevity. I've seen stands 10, 12, or more years old if they're taken care of. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, and all this information is going to be discussed at this novel end of That's right. Shop. That's right, exactly. Okay, yeah. and then do people need to RSVP and register for it? You do need to register for it. There is a cost, and the easiest thing is just Google KY Forages. You get to our Kentucky Forage website, and that has all the registration information for this 
um, workshop and other ones as well. Okay, and you guys offer quite a bit of grazing information and schools mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. like that, and all that is available on Kentucky All those forages. events, and there's over 150 publications and forages on that website. All yep. right, well, I certainly appreciate you being here with us today, and if you have mm -hmm. any questions about forages, make sure to contact your local extension office, and we'd be happy to help. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. If you have questions about today's topic, please call the Warren County Extension Office at the number on your screen. Thanks for watching and have a great day.